Talking with senior shortstop Reed Leonard. And uh, Reed, first of all, let's talk a little bit about the off season and fall ball. What did you guys get accomplished uh, this fall and then as you headed back into the off season last year? Coming off the year that we had last year, we definitely knew that we were losing some guys. So um, coming into this year, we had to, you know, accommodate um, all the new players and see who's going to be key factors and everything like that. But this off season was great, and we built, uh, we had a lot of team chemistry building, um, and I think that's what leads to us to being a good team in the future. This fall, you got a chance to actually play a couple of uh, you know, kind of exhibition games. So not just out there inter-squatting all the time. So how did that go and how did that, what is the benefit of that and being able to head into this season, knowing that you've been out on the field and you had some outside competition? You know, that definitely um, helped us and it was a good first year thing. Um, I liked playing different teams, especially going to different ballparks and everything like that, especially ours. Um, we got to, you know, practice before we even played and got to get used to the bigger field and everything like that. And it sort of like just brings our team together, knowing how we can play together, you know, working on our mistakes and whatnot. Um, so I feel like it's just got us better. Talking about um, offensively this year, just really throughout your career, um, you know, not really known as a power guy, but you haven't been, that's not something that you've had to do, but you, you're an on-base guy uh, last year, 50 straight games on base. How do you attribute that success and what is your mindset at the plate and just being able to help the team and especially in, and I don't know if you will this year, but you were leadoff hitter for most of your last year. Right. Um, so here it's just all about quality at bats and everything like that. And you just got to compete from pitch to pitch. Can't strike out. Um, just try to square up something, get get a barrel, um, see something elevated, go attack it um, on the fastball. And I I feel like that's sort of what the type of approach you got to have. You can't be scared going in there and whatnot. You got to know your pitch and know the hitter that you are. Backing you guys up offensively, you have a great offensive team. What have you seen this year, and what do you think the uh, what do you think the pitching staff will give you this year. A couple of new guys, but a lot of veterans back there too. And that helps you guys obviously knowing that if you have a great pitching staff behind you, uh, your offense doesn't maybe have to do as much. Right. Um, we'll see. I think that we may have one of the best hitting teams that we could possibly have ever here this year. Um, there's a lot of key guys coming back and a lot of key guys that are uh, coming in this year that will play a huge role in the everyday lineup. Um, and then back to pitching, we have a lot of veteran guys coming back, a lot of people that have thrown innings and um, that will contribute. And then also we have guys that have came in, that came in and whatnot, and uh, they'll take their roles as they are and they'll do just fine, I feel like. All right, Reed, good luck this year. Thank you for joining us and uh, here at Morehead State Baseball 2019. Thank you. Next up here on our preview is uh, senior Jake Hammond. And, uh, I want to talk a little bit about, Jake, um, your versatility um, last year and your ability to play multiple positions. Um, and there's been a couple of guys like that on our team. Is that something that um, you kind of learned over the last couple of years, or was it maybe more of a necessity? And how do you think being able to play multiple positions will help the team again this year? Um, I think it's just something that, you know, I just do whatever I can to help the team win. Um, wherever Coach Mack needs me to play is, you know, where I'll play at. And being a play, growing up in high school, playing multiple sports, it, you know, playing basketball, baseball, and football, it kind of helped me become more of an athlete. So when I first come here, coming in as an infielder, you know, you, you learn different things from different positions you go to. And so then when I found my spot in the outfield, it, it just kind of all clicked together. So. Let's talk a little bit about um, the offseason um, fall ball and um, the ability this year uh, to actually play a couple of exhibition games. Right. Um, so how did that help the squad, especially with a lot of new guys coming in this year? Yeah, um, you know, kind of competing against um, each other all fall kind of gets old. So it was, it was really good to go out and um, play these two teams. All, come, all, all of us come out of the same dugout and see what – the lineup that we'll run out there can, can really do some damage and, you know, just see other teams play, see other pitching besides their own. I think it was really good for us. Let's talk about the sustained success here at Moorhead State. Now you're in your fourth year and 
um, every year winning over 30 games, won a couple of championships, uh, won here, especially last year. How exciting was it, obviously, last year to, to win that championship and get basically to the to the top of the mountain last year and be able to play in a regional? It was surreal. It was, it was really a, just an amazing time, with, even with the guys on and off the field, because, um, you know, a lot of people probably counted us out early on when they saw the run that Tennessee Tech was going on, but we kind of stuck together as a group and a unit and worked on the things that we needed to work on and control what we could control. And when we got to the tournament, you know, it just, we just got hot at the right time and everybody was kind of clicking and we just, it was just an amazing time, unbelievable. What's the biggest key to success uh, this year and being able to, again, sustain that success and maybe make another run in a championship this year? Say buying into the plan, the approach that our coaches lay out in front of us. I think they do a good job of kind of instilling in our minds, you know, what, what we need to do to be successful and what has worked here in the past to be successful. So I feel like if, if we just listen to our coaches and be good teammates, uh, it'll all pan itself out. All right. Thank you. Good luck this year. Thank you. Uh, joining us, senior pitcher Dalton Stambaugh. And Dalton, let's first talk about um, fall ball and the off season and um, the team got to play a couple of exhibition games mm -hmm. this year, not just inter squads. And so, how did that help you and help, uh, especially a lot of the new guys coming in this year? Yeah, with uh, with playing Western and Marshall, we uh, we built a base for ourselves and what to expect. Um, the fall is, I mean, we got a bunch of new guys coming together and gelling and um, putting together our way of playing. So. The new guys, kind of with the old guys, the old guys teaching new guys how to, I mean, how to play more at state baseball and, and build our base and um, set our expectations for the spring. Going back to last year, uh, you know, talked about it again, but heading into this year, um, you guys are kind of the favorites here uh, in the OVC, having won the championship last year. And just what did it mean to you personally and to the to the program again to to come up with that championship last year, especially facing a team like Tennessee Tech and being able to beat them twice mm -hmm. and win that championship. Yeah, it meant a lot to us. Um, that, those were our goals going into the season was to win the OVC. And uh, we had a rough patch there in the middle of the year, but um, persevering through it. And I think for us as a team and for me personally, it was nice to see us overcome some adversity. And um, we knew we had the talent to win. And it was just coming together and playing as a team. This year, uh, again, you'll probably be relied on, uh, I would assume, um, to be in that kind of weekend rotation role, uh, although it's not set yet. But um, last year, how did you adapt to, to that role, and what lessons did you learn last year that you can take here into your senior season? Yeah. Um, so adapting to the role, uh, I mean, it was tough. Um, my First year here, I was I, I threw on Saturday, so it made kind of last year a little bit easier throwing on Saturdays too. Um, there's I'm obviously in a part of the season where everybody slumps, and um, you just got to find your way through it. And uh, last year in the middle, middle of the season, I found my slump, um, and just I mean focusing on your goals and focusing on what, what you worked the whole fall for and stuff like that um, is is the way that I push through it. Um, but no, I think that adapting to the role and it's just embracing it. Talk about some of the, not specifically maybe, but some of the new guys and how you are helping the newer pitchers. Uh, you got a couple of, some Juco guys, some, some freshmen, uh, you know, how do you help them, uh, especially like the freshman guys mm -hmm. that, you know, you know, you were there a few years ago and how do they adapt to and, and, and change their game into the college level now? Yeah, I think you see with a lot of guys, they come in and they don't necessarily work as hard or throw as much as what what they uh, what we do. So for me, as being an upperclassman, it's kind of showing them how we do things with um, prehab and recovery and all of that. Um, a lot of guys come in and they're just show and go guys. I was myself. Um, so just showing them. I mean, we got to do stuff every day, whether it be conditioning or med ball. Um, but showing them how how to do that, how to go through that process, I mean, it makes them a better player, and they just kind of got to adapt to our program and um, got to trust what we're doing. All right, sounds good. Uh, thank you for joining us. Good luck. Thank you. Joined today by head coach Mike McGuire, Moorhead State baseball, and um, coach, thanks for joining us. And got to be a lot of excitement uh, heading into this 2019 season, knowing that you're coming off a championship and. Uh, 
many publications and a lot of people um, are agreeing with across the country that Moorhead State Baseball is a program to be reckoned with and you've built something special here and how do you uh, continue to sustain that success and then we'll talk a little bit about a lot of the personnel this season. Well, certainly we're very excited uh, this time of year. I think every program in the country is excited. You can kind of smell the you know, opening day at this point in time, and the weather's cooperated a little bit here lately, so we've been outside, and that uh, just uh, turns it up another level. And, uh, you know, so we're all chomping at the bit to go play. But then, you know, I, I think that, yes, we have a lot of anticipation and excitement. We feel like we got a chance to contend for a championship and, and get back to a regional. And from a talent standpoint, I think that we f we see that on a daily basis. We feel that. We know we have to go out and play well and win ball games and, and take care of the little things that uh, it takes to be a successful uh, team and win a championship. But, you know, I think how we've done it, I have been fortunate to have a, a really good staff the whole time I've been here. And, uh, you know, a couple of the faces have changed, uh, you know, on that staff uh, over these last six years. But, uh, you know, Adam Brown's been a, a mainstay here with me and, uh, you know, is our recruiting coordinator has done a great job identifying guys that uh, fit the fit the mold of what it takes at, at our level at Moorhead State. And I think we like to joke about we're blue collar. You know, there's other programs in the country that have nicer, shinier, fancier things than us. But we've, we talk about we have everything we need to be successful. Uh, you know, some of our guys are, are very blue collar, and that's really a motto that we want to, you know, uh, put our arms around. Uh, I think there's nothing wrong with being blue collar. And, you know, I, I think that we've identified good players. We've been able to, to develop them, and, and we coach them up. And, you know, the kid that wants to be coached, I think, can, can really prosper in our program. So we've been fortunate to do that. And, and, uh, you know, part of it is getting lucky, too. I mean, you find that diamond in the rough that really turns into, uh, you know, a much better player than maybe you even anticipate in the recruiting process. That's part of having a successful program. You need a little luck on your side. Somebody and, like a Nico Hall side. Yeah, player, you, you know, know the kid that, kid that flies a little bit under the radar. A lot of the big, big schools think he's a little short for them. And then the next thing you know, he's a star at this level. And, you know, Aaron Lasher is kind of the same way, an undrafted left-hander that left here three years later as a six-round draft pick. Uh, you know, uh, Matt Anderson, uh, Pat McGuff, right-handed pitchers that, you know, had an opportunity to play pro ball. Tyler Keel, the same way, that relatively unrecruited uh, kids, and we've been able to develop them, and, and certainly they deserve the credit that they put the work in. And I've got a lot of players that – just because they didn't get a chance to play pro ball, uh, really maximized their ability and, and had great careers. And you can look at, you know, at the Braxton Morris and Tyler Neiman, you know, that just graduated a year ago. And you can go back, you know, a guy like Will Schneider was relatively unrecruited out of out of junior college and had a great two-year career for us. And and the list goes on and on. So we're very proud of that and and what what we've been able to do. And certainly winning helps. And Kids want to be a part of a winning program, and, and, and that's helped us too. The goal is always to be a little bit better with every recruiting class. And you know, I won't say it always happens, but I feel like we're certainly trending in that direction. You've got a good number of positional players coming back from that team last year, and then you'll add in a few newcomers that maybe have risen to the top of the depth chart in the fall. So let's kind of hit on some of those guys and what they'll bring and then what some of the newcomers will bring this year. Well, certainly – you talk about returning players, and you guys start in the middle infield. And Reed Leonard returns as a four-year starter. Now uh, was on the Brooks Wallace Award list last year. Had a had a great year. Has been, in my opinion, the best shortstop in the OVC the last three years. And I've been very fortunate to have him and plug his name in the lineup one more year. Um, Trevor Snyder returns at first base. Uh, as preseason All-American in some publications. Had a monster year for us. Uh, Hunter Fain returns behind the plate. Hunter was a, a mainstay for us last year, despite having a, a rough year offensively. I really like where he's at right now and, and really predicting he's going to have kind of a breakout year uh, from where he was a year ago. And and then, uh, you know, in the outfield, Connor Pauly returns in center field, uh, you know, as a preseason all-conference guy. And, and Jake Hammond's uh, returning. He'll split some time. He'll be in right or left, uh, where he played right exclusively for us last year. But uh, – one of our best outfielders and uh, his flexibility move from one side of the field to the other uh, is going to be key for us. But those are, you know, key guys that return that uh, 
were in the battles last year and, and got a lot of at bats. Uh, Bryce Henzer is a freshman that uh, last year that played a lot for us. Injuries kind of forced him in the lineup, and he deserved to be in there. Uh, took advantage of his opportunity, and uh, you know he should be our second baseman opening day, and and uh, really a, a you know a, a spark plug offensively. He's just a tough out, and you know I look forward to what a year of in the in the weight room and a year of maturity does for him as an offensive player. So. Those are the main guys that uh, saw significant playing time that I expect to have an imp impact for us on the field right away. Some of the newcomers that might uh, play an impact too. I know sometimes it's tough because you know you've got a good mix of JUCO guys. You have to, and you've had success with JUCO guys, but you also want to bring in some freshmen and give them a chance. And your program has been able to do that over the years too. There's been some freshmen that have played all four years and and got a chance as a as a first year player. So mm -hmm. who are a couple of the guys, two or three guys that maybe will fans will see and, and their names will come up this year? Well I think uh the first guy is Ryan Lane. Uh you know, Ryan's a Lexington, Kentucky kid but went to Wabash Valley Community College. Uh, you know, he has hit from the day he got on campus and a uh, good left handed hitter that uh is gonna hit uh, somewhere near the top to the middle of our lineup and and hope he just keeps on hitting. And uh He's a pretty good athlete. Uh, I think you'll see him in both corner outfield s spots. And you may see him at second base. Uh, may even see him at third base at some point. Uh, and I think he's a guy that you'd say right now, you're writing his name in the lineup, just not sure what position he's playing on a given day. Uh, and freshman Zach Boyd, uh, you know, is a left-handed hitter that's impressed, you know, since he got here, really like his makeup, really like his work habits. Got a good left-handed swing, uh, you know, he's developing into a good outfielder. Obviously, was an infielder by trade in high school. But, uh, you know, he's a guy that's going to get opportunity as well early, and we, we think he's got a bright future. And you know, at third base, uh, you've got two junior college kids both kind of, uh, you know, battling there. And I'll be honest, they're both good players, and they're both, uh, you know, playing well. And that's uh, Don Peroni and uh, Stephen Hill, and, and both of them are, are good players. And, you know, could see time, you know, at DH as well as some other spots. It's not necessarily a situation where one plays and the other sits. Uh, I think there are going to be times we're going to try to get both of them in the lineup. And uh, I think Scott Wolverton's a, a Juco catcher that you'll see in, in the mix back there with Hunter, you know, right off the bat. I think those are the, the guys you'd say that, you know, are going to, you know, have the most impact, you know, right away. You know, there's certainly some other guys there. Uh, John Burkhart, Chase Sorter, Arthur Sells, they're going to be in the mix for some at-bats as well. And, and we're going to do some some plugging in early in the year. I mean, I think our lineup's never settled, and it seems like until, uh, you know, the last third of the season, you're always moving guys around, and hopefully we stay healthy. I think we have the flexibility positionally to move some guys around, but health is always a concern. And, you know, we battled that as much as any program in the country last year, uh, and you know, the flexibility we had as a club, I think, allowed us to keep our head above water till we got some of our horses back uh, late in the year. I talked to Jake about that and kind of the utility player. You've been able to develop. And I don't know if that's something these guys bring in when, when they get here, but the versatility that some of your players have had, you talk about a Tyler Neiman or a Will Schneider, or Jake Hammond, you know, it's got to be a luxury to have a couple of guys like that that you know – you know, they could play outfield, they could play infield. It just depends on what you need on a certain day against a certain opponent. So I know it's got to be a luxury for you to know that you've got a couple of those guys again this year. Yeah, I mean, you look for it in the recruiting process. You you want athletic guys, and a lot of our guys were high school shortstops. They're not all shortstops at this level, but you move them around. And, you know, Jake Hammond is probably, you know, in the mix, uh, you know, to – you know, if we got in a ball game and had to make some moves and, and pinch run, pinch hit, whatever, you know, and if somebody's hurt, I mean, I have no qualms about plugging Jake Hammond and play middle infield. And, and so uh, just having different guys like that that you can move around and, and a lot of them have spent time in the infield. They have to learn the outfield, which is usually easier to do than, than the other way around. So, uh, you know, I think uh, we have that flexibility again this year. I think it's uh, – you hope it's not tested too much. I think last year forced it from a health standpoint. You hope it, you're using that flexibility just to give guys rest and uh, to p put your best nine out there on a daily basis. But, 
in the event the entry bug does creep up, I, I feel good about what we have to, to plug in. Finally, let's talk about the pitching staff. And I know we've talked a little bit uh, off camera some this fall. And it seems to be all indications, if you can stay healthy, that this could potentially be one of your strongest, if not the strongest and most talented uh, pitching staff that maybe you've had in your time here at Morehead State. Well, I'm very excited about our pitching. Uh, you know, several reasons for optimism. I think one, you know, Dalton Stanball kind of is at the front of our, our rotation. I, I think – uh, he pitched as well as anybody at the end of the year last year. And, and not just anybody at Morehead State. I mean, if you look at what he did probably over his last 15 innings, you know, he, 20 innings, he, he was as good as anybody in college baseball, what he did. Uh, and, and under the duress, he did it. And I think it's given him a lot of confidence. I mean, he, you know, walks around and, and expects to lead the staff and expects to take the ball on Friday night. And I, I think you can just see the confidence he gained from last – uh, season and, and the run in the postseason and so forth. And then, uh, you know, I think Garrett Rogers, who finished the year really strong for us last year, has really, you know, come on all fall, all preseason, and has really thrown the ball well and, and just keeps getting better and, and more comfortable. And, and I think those guys are uh, certainly, you know, key guys for us uh, to start the season. One of the big things is return to health for some guys. Uh, last year, you know, Jake Ziegelmeyer was nicked up. Uh, you saw Jason Go and Alex Garbrick out all season. You know, if you when we started the year last year, you know, if those guys all all healthy, that's three of our top six or seven arms that we spent the whole season without without two of them. And Zig was just a, a shadow of himself at the end. So, you know, they're all healthy now. They're all I expect all to be key contributors their roles and so forth be unsettled. Obviously, you get a little careful with them early and how you use them and how much you use them, but you're going to hear all three of those names pretty frequently throughout the spring, and, and that's a big part of our staff, and I'm, I'm you know excited about uh, the contributions all three are going to make. And then I think you look around – just a year of experience, year of maturity have helped, you know, a David Looney. You know, David's in better shape. You know, he's really thrown the ball well for us. Uh, I think uh, Will Lozenax, you know, a year more experienced, year more mature. Uh, I think that's helped him tremendously. I, I think, uh, you know, you'll see, uh, you'll see Landon Wines, a very talented freshman, you know, get the ball for us and, and, and make some contributions for us. Uh, you know, I think if you look around, you know, guys like Don Masulo, you know, just an, an extra year just helps them that much more. Grant Crosby, they're just, just more comfortable. TJ Satterley with what, you know, is – you look at that and, you know, a guy like TJ at times was pitching on Friday nights for us last year. I think we start the year, he's in the bullpen. So, I think it tells you that our, you know, our depth is, is continuing to, to evolve, but it's it's much stronger than what it was at the end of the year last year. So, Really excited about our staff. I think it can be a really good staff. I think they're going to we're going to be a work in progress just because of you know some pitching you know health concerns. Not that they're injured, but you know just want to manage their counts early and and manage their roles as best we can. And you know who we are as a staff uh, February fifteenth and and who we are May fifteenth. Uh, you know there's a lot, a lot of changes over the course of that time, but I'm very excited with what this staff can become. And finally, uh, you know, you are picked first in the OVC, like we said, in a lot of publications and officially. Um, so I think that's the first time in the OVC that we've been picked first. Uh, but I guess just kind of talk about what that means. And you know that maybe, you know, you, you are getting respect. Now, of course, you've got to go out and do it on the field. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of times those preseason polls and things – may not play out in the end uh, because lots of times it's an indication of maybe what teams have coming back. They're not sure what mm -hmm. teams have coming in. But to know that uh, obviously this program is up there and to have the respect of this league uh, has to be gratifying. It is. Uh, it certainly doesn't guarantee us anything, doesn't help us win any games and so forth. Uh, just from where the program was when I got here and, you know, knowing that, you know, the project, you know, to build the program – uh, it's gratifying to know that the other coaches respect that we're going to be right there at the end of the year now. And I, I think that, you know, we won the league in 2015 and 
you know, went to regional 15 and, and, you know, the next year, you know, we're, I think we were picked fifth or sixth, you know, and I, that for me, that was a little bit of a slap, you know, but uh, I think now, I think we're, you know, we get some credit and, and have some credibility that, you know, we do a good job of recruiting and bringing good players in every year and, and we're not just a one hit wonder and, you know, that's the goals of the program. Uh, our goals don't change at all because of the coaches picking us or not picking us. So we want to get to a regional. We expect to get to a regional. Uh, and, you know, that starts with winning OVC. And it, it, for me, it's just a, a little bit of an accomplishment and uh, credit to my staff, credit to my players and, and so forth. But, you know, when we roll conference around, it's not going to help us win any ball games. But it's nice to know that, you know, your peers think you – Got, got a chance to have a good club, and, and, you know, you've been there for years now. All right, Coach, uh, good luck this year. Thank you. All right, thanks, Matt. The, uh, that's Coach head, head Coach Mike McGuire, Moorhead State Baseball. The season starts this week, February 15th at Furman, and there are several ways to follow Moorhead State Baseball on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, lots of ways. Most of our home games this year will be broadcast on ESPN+. So join us for an exciting year of Moorhead State Baseball.